everyone. It's Leigh Bell from Melbourne, Australia. It is uh, going on, well, it is 9.31 p.m. at night on the 19th of December, 2019. I'm sorry, I'm shaking. Trying to. Yesterday I had uh, another jaw, jaw appointment um, and I've been very, very sore since, of course. So today I've slept all day. If you see this pad here, because it's, it's hot here, it's a cooling pad. I've been resting on that to keep myself cool and put coolness on my jaw because I'm swollen. And I've not spoken a word, seriously. Um, right up to 8.30, a little over an hour ago, I was so relaxed. And that's something I need, especially when you've got this jaw disorder. And we've got a phone call from my husband and all hell broke loose. Thirteen months ago, I almost lost my husband. If you don't know, we're separated due to circumstances, mainly our health. My husband, Michael, is a transplant. He's uh, had a, I believe it was 15 years ago, a kidney and pancreas transplant. It saved his life because he, I was planning his funeral. Dialysis was not working for him. And um, God bless, he was saved. Four years later, his pancreas failed, which basically, it's better than his kidney failing, which basically meant that um, he had to go back on insulin. So for four years, he was actually cured from diabetes, which was a blessing, such a blessing that he those four years. Some of you may know that this year uh, he was in hospital, he had an amputation on one of his toes. Last year he had all his toes off on the left foot. Um, I'll be honest, ever since we got married uh, it's been very stressful because we knew he had diabetes but because he's American when he moved to Australia and when you go through the immigration process, you have to go through, you know, lots of tests, etc. I think it was only three weeks after we had gotten married that we found out that my husband, they'd given him three years um, till he went into complete renal failure due to um, diabetic, diabetic complications. And then we had to fight to keep him here. Um, he as soon as he came to Australia on a fiancé visa, he took me off my sickness benefit and he worked straight away. He paid his taxes. Um, and uh, it's not like... Um, and he, he gave up everything in the States. He had a good job um, to come here for me. So when we had to fight, um, because they basically denied him to stay in Australia when they found that out, uh, even though, you know, he'd been working and there was no, if he'd gone back to America, he wouldn't have had a place to go. Uh, he didn't have a job. He had no insurance. He, he basically gave up everything to come to Australia and he had no idea that this was going to happen. Finally, um, and there's no way I could go to America. Um, my support system was here on my specialist, and it's a better health system here in Australia. It just is. I'm so stressed out. I seriously almost lost my husband tonight again. I don't know how many times I've, I've almost lost him, but every time it just gets more and more real. I think it's because we're getting older. He's just turned 55, it's being separated from him is like really, really hard. Uh, 
I still don't know exactly what happened, but I'm assuming that he, um, he had a massive hypo after the cleaner left, which was, uh, I've worked out, was around 12 p.m. And he can't remember any since anything from 12 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. He woke up. When I say woke up, he came around because he was obviously, he was completely unconscious. He does not remember all of those hours. Um, he was able to press redial on the phone to call my mum and the pendant, but then he was unable to communicate with us. Um, he is usually when a, a patient, a diabetic, drops that low, they go into a, di a diabetic coma, and which he has been in before I met him and almost died. He was actually in the ICU over Christmas um, about a year before I met him, I think it was, many, many years ago. And he was lucky that because his dad and his brother were um, had gone to Vegas and they lived in Arizona and uh, Michael had to work. But the dad just had this feeling and thank God because he came home and found Michael in a coma Normally, uh, I mean, I lost a second cousin um, who was extremely healthy um, due to having a massive hypo. And she was only 22. Uh, it can happen, especially when you're very fragile like Michael, my husband. So I believe, I believe, I mean, as my, my mum said, he... he we can't just put it down to that. It could have been, he could have had a turn. Like, I hope they, I'm sure they would check him out because he's lost, he lost so much time and that's really upset him. He's, thank God for the ambulance service and thank God for our pendant. God has, I mean, I'm not, I'm a spiritual person and I believe in God, but I'm not religious in the sense that I go to church and I pray all the time and I have the Bible, etc. Um, but God, it, there's something. God was on his side again because he was able to come out after being under for so long, which usually doesn't happen, usually will result in a coma or death. Um so thank God, because otherwise I would have still been here relaxing. I wasn't going to be calling my husband tonight because of my jaw. At the moment, my adrenaline's pumping so much, I don't even feel this pain. I shouldn't be talking, but I've got to get this out. I want to raise awareness, and I really want to stress that you've got to never leave someone that you care about without telling them that you love them. And all this fricked up drama on YouTube, it's like, especially people that once cared about, about each other, it's just, you got to think, I could have very easily lost my husband tonight at the age of 42. God, I'm so blessed and I feel, even though I know I can't help this our situation, if something happened to him, I would feel so guilty because, you know, if I was there, I'd catch it and that's what it's so hard, this separation. so hard when you've got to put your own health first, your own mental and physical health. I just want to get, I'm not doing this for sympathy, I'm doing this because I needed to talk. Obviously I haven't brushed my hair or anything, I really don't give up flying. I really want to get out there, that it is, I know we, we, 
as human beings, we just think that tomorrow is a given and it's not. And reality hits me all the time because Michael's so fragile. But this happens a lot. I mean, this is the second time in a year. Well, it's many years since I have. <sighs> it doesn't get any easier. In fact, I think it gets harder. And my mum just had a talk to me and she's right. And she's being realistic as we've really got to get things in order. Um, because it, even if you're healthy, you just never know what's going to happen. We're not promised tomorrow. And that's why I always tell even those that I've never met in my life, but I care about them, that I love them when I leave. Because I think when you've been really unwell for a long time or you've lived with someone that's very unwell, you kind of appreciate life a lot more than most. It's just something, you know, it's a human thing. And, um, you know, I, as I said, at 8.30, I'm laying here listening to a podcast and my husband could have been dead. And the fact that I wasn't going to be calling him until tomorrow, if I was able to, it's just it's it's a it's an un it's just, it's I've kind of feel like I'm in a dream. It's like my body is trying to protect itself, but it's it's realistic, you know. And and he when he realised that he lost so much time, he started to freak out. Um, so he's um, he's in good hands. The ambulance people are amazing. God bless them. God, if any of you are first responders, police, the fire brigade, ambulance men and women, nurses, or even doctors, specialists, God bless you. Because I don't know how many times you've helped me and my husband. Thank God. I'm in a country that, especially when you're on a pension, that it's free. Just, I'm just, I feel blessed. My husband's alive. He's in good hands. He's in, I don't know what hospital. Usually they take him straight to the Monash Medical Centre where he had his transplant, but because it was so urgent, they probably rush him straight to the, the emergency once they stabilised him. And if they need to, they will then transfer him to Monash. Um, he may even be home tomorrow. I know he did hurt his arm and his shoulder, but it could just be bruising because he's very frail. I literally, I've just, I know talking, this, any kind of stress is the worst thing for my jaw. And I know, like, I, but I just feel so blessed. And I just, you just, just be kind to people. Never leave someone with a harsh word, even if you, if they've really, really hurt you. Always leave with a kind word, especially a loved one. Always say you love them because you just never know. You just never know. It's like my cat, Lily. She was healthy. She was well. And she dropped dead. She screamed and she dropped dead. And that was such a shock. It happens. We can just drop dead. And I know that this may come across morbid, especially at this time of the year. But it's life and it's a fact and you can be healthy and it can happen. We could be hit by a truck. We need to appreciate every everyone in our lives and our own lives and even those people that annoy us and hurt us is we just need to keep reminding ourselves that, yeah, they've hurt us, 
and they make us so frustrated and upset but we would never ever wish them to hurt to lose a loved one or to lose their own lives I just I needed to do this um do you see that I burnt myself and um I forgot um and I just pressed it and I just burst it so yeah well done Belle <laughs> yeah how painful so think think before you type something especially on the especially on the internet you know type something to someone because you can say so many things that you would normally probably not say to someone's face um and that's why I honestly when I even when I'm really upset with someone and not impressed by their behaviour, especially with the lot that's going on at the moment, that I wish no harm and I really I want everything to stop because life is so short and I just want everyone to be happy even if I'm not their friend because wasting your life on on hurt and and things that stress you out it's just not worth it okay I'm feeling a little bit more calm now um thank you for those that are listening I I don't even need anyone to watch this I, I guess I just needed to get this out I'm going to go now and Meditate because I can feel I'm stopping because I can feel this stiffen and I'm going to wait on the hospital to call me, which could be early morning to see what's going on and hopefully he may be even home tomorrow. Okay, guys, remember to... Love and respect yourself and others. And if you're having a bad day, remember, there is always tomorrow. And one last thing. Appreciate everyone in your life. Make every moment count because you never know. Be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. I love you all. I wish you all peace and happiness and to experience all the beauty in life. Take care, everyone. Love from Melbourne, Australia. Lily Bell.